these effects where they go out and commit some violence. Stay there, Jakari. We're going to come back in one minute. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit Ron Paul's coming up, too. Today. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, final segment with our star reporters, Jakari Jackson and Kit Daniels. They went out to the press conference at Fort Hood with the Lieutenant General, Commander of the Base, uh, Mark Milley, and asked, hey, was he on drugs? Was he in psychiatric care? Oh, yeah, he was. No one else is going to ask that. You see it in AP, Reuters. It's the big story nationwide. I'm not tooting our horn. It's just that we went and asked the real questions. I mean, what's wrong with these reporters, Jakari Jackson, that they were there? Because, you know, you guys have tons of this press conference, audio and video. No one was asking the real questions but you guys. Well, you know, the thing about it was, you know, because last night I got this information right when we were doing the nightly news. So I had to do the show and me and Kit flew out to... Uh, to Fort Hood. And when we get there, the press conference had probably been going over like 10, 20 minutes yeah. before we got there. You know, Kid Daniels, to his credit, jumps out of a moving car when I turn into the base. <laughs> <laughs> then I run up to the press conference. I go park the car and get over there. And people asking, you know, you know, what about the uh, the police woman who stopped the guy? You know, another, you know, questions that are reasonable. But, you know, Kid comes with the uh, with the hard sell. Hey, man, was the guy, was he on the drugs? You know, what? Oh, was he on drugs? Why was he taking the drugs? You know, what's up with the guns? Will you allow the guys to carry concealed on the on the Fort Hood campus? He says no. The general says no because we have trained people here to protect you. But as we saw on a military base, they can't even keep you safe there. It's it's sad to me that the military brass today has fallen so far away from the ideals of our founding fathers. So when the Second Amendment was written, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists they didn't even debate about it. It's hardly any debate about because they all believed in it. They believed in the individual right to self-defense. It was one of the only things that there was a debate on. It was, I mean, they debated for months on the other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But nowadays, it's like, well, we don't even have we don't even have Second Amendment anymore when it comes to military base, even though they are defending our freedoms. So it's like, what's with this duopoly? It's well, they won't even defend the freedoms of their own soldiers because you know we've we've got those leaked documents from from Fort Hood where they say that if you're a uh, evangelical, or well, not just that, Tea Party. Yeah, all that. But he also, if you're a uh, open carry, the guys like to go out and open carry, they say, no, you can't do that if you represent Fort Hood. That's right. They're saying we may court-martial you. Yeah. And, and we've had the sergeant and others on. Was he master sergeant? We will not allow you to be in Second Amendment demonstrations. Mm -hmm. We might court-martial you back on base. Exactly right. Exactly right. So they won't even stand up for the rights of their own soldiers. Yeah, and the other... That's because they're under the command of the globalist. And this lieutenant general, just think if he said... Well, yes, I agree. Maybe we should consider concealed carry. He'd get, he'd get purged out of the military like that. Well, he, he did seem better than a lot of the. I mean, imagine how honest his answers and straightforward were compared to the White House press secretary. Yeah, I mean, at least the guy was saying what he what he believed, or at least he's been trained to believe. He was just giving you straight answers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was saying, yeah, he was on drugs. Yeah, it was psychiatric. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give him that. I definitely give him that. But, you know, definitely interested to see what else comes out of this situation, you know, uh, people ask me, you know, is this, is this again? What do you think when you heard about it again? Because even when Kit told me about it last night, I was like, 
Fort Hood, like, again? You know, so maybe we can get to the root of this problem. Well, it's such a giant base. Yeah, if we get to the root of the problem where it's not just the firearm itself, it's the person and the action and taking responsibilities for those actions. I mean, to quantify it, it's like, it's like a city like Dallas. Yeah. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people go in and out of there every week. It's just giants. You're going to have stuff like this happen. Yeah. My bottom line is do not blame the Second Amendment. Yeah. I mean, that's what I told Piers Morgan. I said, look, you're prescribing mass murder pills. You have the ads on for all these Prozac-type drugs that make people do this. Stop blaming gun owners for what your listeners do. Yeah, but they didn't want to give up that, that ad revenue. So let's, let's change the question. <laughs> well, they kicked me off. They went to commercial and ended it. <laughs> I was supposed to come back. And then they're like, uh-oh. I mean, he was there to blame us like we killed those kids at mm -hmm. Sandy Hook, if you believe the official story and the blue screens and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's, it's all of us. We're collectively bad, but it's never talking about the real issues. You know, all the research done into these mass shooters being on these pills for several years now. It's almost every case. Yeah. I, I can't think of any case where they're not on it. Because normal people don't just randomly go out and start shooting people. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. No. Right. I mean, it's like people that are having a diabetic shock or something, driving 100 miles an hour. They don't know. Great job, guys. The video's up on Infowars.com and DrudgeReport.com. Ron Paul's coming up. Stay with us. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low-grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver. Find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Ladies and gentlemen,
and gentlemen, we are joined by the Omnibudsman, the granddaddy of the modern constitutional libertarian movement, and his son is the U.S. Senator from Kentucky in all major polls, the front runner to be the Republican nominee. And of course, that's Rand Paul, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, former Congressman Ron Paul uh, joins us here today to cover the waterfront. Thank you for coming on, sir. He also, of course, has ronpaulchannel.com, launching his own powerful multimedia TV uh, print radio system. I'm on affiliates all over the country that carry his daily commentaries. And so I am able to hear those when I'm a guest. Very exciting. Uh, to see Ron Paul and many others like Jesse Ventura starting their own media operations. This will fully overthrow the old dinosaur media system that's already discredited itself. Uh, Dr. Paul, out of the gates, Fort Hood situation. Our reporters last night talked to the commanding general. The video's on drudgereport.com. Uh, they confirmed he was on uh, psychotropic drugs and Ambien. We're now learning he was on multiple drugs. What is your take on that as a medical doctor? Well, obviously, I think the drugs have a major role to play in this almost all the time, whether there's high school shootings or wherever this occurs, that they're uh, receiving this government-directed care for uh, psychological problems and there are psychotropic drugs. It's happening all the time. So that's the immediate thing that crosses my mind when, when I hear this. And then when you hear of it being uh, related to government and military and veterans, you can be guaranteed that they're getting the wrong kind of treatment. So medically, I think it's, uh, you know, that the diagnosis is wrong, the treatment is wrong, and we participate, we may take one thing and make it worse. I think what, what's happened is they, uh, they, they look at these terrible acts, and yet they're merely a symptom of something else, and I think they never look for the cause. Why do people come back from war uh, with, with this uh, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, and also the many brain injuries? Well, it's the war. It, it, it's the war that, that's going on there. And then when you think about, well, in medicine, you know, we, we want to pre prevent diseases. But in politics, it doesn't seem like they want to prevent the harm done because, you know, if you don't want these kind of problems, why don't we have a different foreign policy? You know, this is a consequence. So they create the conditions to jeopardize all these young people. They come back. They can't get jobs. They become depressed. We put them on drugs. We make them a lot worse. And, uh, and we don't change our, our foreign policy. We compound it. We create the we create the problem, then give them drugs and make it worse, and then everybody is just totally shocked. Oh, how could this? How could this happen? You know, and uh, fortunately, it's not happening more. I think they've created conditions uh, which are so so terrible. But the real tragedy when we hear about the killings and all, but what about the hundreds of thousands now who are suffering? And they're just falling, you know, talk about falling through the cracks. These people are out on the streets and, and they're begging for treatment. And, and yet my big beef is they never look at the cause. You know, during the campaign, we used to talk about, uh, I emphasize this whole thing of, of blowback. Maybe maybe we have a, a problem with terrorism, war on terrorism, because we have a deeply flawed foreign policy and there is blowback. No, they're not going to talk about that. And they're not going to talk about wars that make no sense. And uh, that, of course, is what I would think is the important thing. Otherwise, we're going to have this problem for a long time to come. It's probably still going to cost us trillions of dollars doing the wrong thing. Well, you're an Air Force veteran, and, of course, uh, during the Vietnam era, you you saw a lot of duty there. Back, back even during Vietnam, they only made him serve one or two tours. Uh, one of my grandfathers, uh, after he served his uh, 22 flights in the Army Air Corps over Europe was on the ground in Italy and was shaken for his whole life by the starving Italian children and the horrors he saw uh, in Italy and the rest of Europe. That was uh, just two years in the U.S. Army. Uh, and my other grandfather was uh, affected by World War II and a crash he was in, both of them in the Army Air Corps. I, I just can't imagine these guys, many of them, more than 10 tours of combat now. I don't think anybody mentally can handle that. No, and that is a big thing. That is different, uh, even though these wars are seen as not nearly as violent as the other ones. World War killed hundreds of thousands, you know, and Vietnam killed a lot more. But a lot of people went, and a lot of people were injured and uh, damaged. And uh, 
And, and it's more than anybody ever imagined. And they went back and forth so often. They actually ended up in uh, these these recent wars with more days in duty and, and worrying about what mine they're going to start, step on and get and, and get blown up. But then there's the addition. Uh, even though this this problem existed in World War One.